It is the top of the third turn of this giant game, and I'm about to start it off. This is Trinon, and this is Case Blue and Gadurian's with Screak 2. So, it is October 8th, 1941 in the game. Not in real life. And the very first part of the turn before either player goes is we determine the weather and we determine who chooses who goes first. Again, it's interesting that this game has the choice of going first because, again, players can get double turns if they go last on the prior turn and go first on the next turn. And if they already have a strong advantage and need one more turn to really exploit it, this can be crushing. The Russians actually have a rule called Massive Assault. They get four per in the entire game, where they get to, at the bottom of a turn, or announce a prior turn that they're going to declare Massive Assault. The next turn, they automatically get initiative, automatically go first, essentially and the enemy does not get a reaction phase, meaning they can't counteract whatever the Russians do. The Germans do get to set up alert units during that time, extra units to try to get some defense, but otherwise it's a way for the Russians to have a massive offensive. I'm holding off on that right now because I don't think the Russians are in that strong of a position. So, for the first part of the turn we have the weather determination phase and so we're going to look at the October 1st through 8th and that is indeed it is automatically dry uh, conditions so we're not going to have any freezing or mud and the flight roll is still a 2 to 6 for normal flight and a one being limited flight. All right, so standard conditions. Now, I'm gonna have a roll off, German, Russians. Whoever wins this chooses who goes first and who goes second. Well, that's the Russian choice right there. So let's ponder for a second. What can the Russians gain by going first? Well, they had a okay turn prior, trying to do some massive assaults. Not massive assaults, that's a different thing. But doing some pretty strong attacks. They could build up supplies. As it stands though, they should have some pretty full supply depots as is to defend what they need. And the Germans are still incredibly low on fuel. And the Russians don't really gain anything from going first. In fact, they have to do supply checks yet again, and that would make them weaker, arguably. So, really it benefits them to go second, especially to hold off on that double turn if they can pull it off, or to prevent the Germans from doing so. So, much like the prior turn, the Russians are going to declare the Axis to go first. And let's mark this turn counter. It is the 8th of October. Alright. And while I'm at it, let's talk about some things I've done. I've sorted the units by what kind of replaced in the dead piles, as in where they can be repaired, theoretically, by what costs it takes to replace them. Over here I have the tree bark suit the Russians can get, and the sausage and tree bark suit the Axis can get. Sausage is used for the um, Axis to essentially get trace supply and eat off the map when they're defending cities and not um, in supply normally. We have an airbase card or a few. 
the emergency reinforcements for the axis. And that looks like not much dead pile, but actually it's right here. The trucks need a special rebuild. And yeah, we're going to do a lot of aircraft refitting. So the fronts are interesting. We have the pockets still. Have a lot of access reserves, and I'm going to have to set up even more as time goes on. And we have basically the same situation. I'm still frustrated at this map overlay, but I really can't do anything about it. I'd have to reconfigure the whole map essentially and start the game over almost, or record every position in the game, and that's just kind of disgusting to think about. So, and of course, my drawings of anime uh, blame people who asked for it, and I, I'm horribly enough conceding that. And just want to show some more off supply stuff. Have some wet erase markers for the sake of marking um, just various supply points and info that I can wash off on the plexiglass, of course. We have the south box of the edge of Russia which uh, units can come in through here. More units in the dead pile that I should probably move up there, over there, way up there, come on, up there. Yeah, I should consolidate these a little bit more. And then I have pieces from the game Dominant Species to just be mnemonic devices. They're, they've served pretty useful, these tiny cubes especially. We have dice that came with the game, but they're kind of tiny and bad. And I have a bunch of counter trays stacked up. They kind of look like that one right here. This one has all of the game tokens in it, but then I have others with all the unit pieces. So then some scissors and some holding boxes. The axes have a lot of holding boxes. And the most important thing, the tweezers. Seriously, this is a lifesaver. If I had to do this game with my grubby little fat fingers, the pieces would be knocked over constantly. They already are with my jittery hands, but uh, it'd be so much worse. So that's kind of just a general thing right here. And what is my. And I kind of want to do a little summary of what's the game been like so far. It's taken a long time to do, especially the first turn. Uh, the second turn went by much faster. I'm hoping that as the game goes on, I'll speed up play. Recording's kind of tricky, too, just because of the timing of when I want to record things. Do I want to record each phase? And the answer is no. And I'm thinking and I'm really liking this game so far, the playthrough of it. As an OCS game, it's very different from the ones I've played. I've played Tunisia 2, Sicily 2, Reluctant Enemies a little bit, and uh, have a bunch of other ones, but between those, those games are much more about like mountain passes and tight corridors. This game has a lot of open fields and a lot more units, and the idea of truck extenders and pushing really far behind enemy lines, like basically playing on a map of this size, really changes the style of game. So, I mean, I obviously can't recommend this game. It's out of print, or at least this half is. This one is still fairly expensive. And you need huge amounts of table space and a lot of plexiglass or some kind of way to cover the map. And just like accessories and everything. And if you don't have any of that, then the investment is just through the roof. So it's more of like an incredibly niche experience. And, you know, I'm doing a solitaire play. Doing face-to-face -face is even more unlikely. Though I might 
try to finagle some friends to help move some counters and just chill and grab a beer or something. So, but I think playing it now, it's kind of one of those sinking time into it has made it, it it's a worthwhile experience once I'm getting into it. Even though I'm definitely not going to finish this game, it's 178 turns for crying out loud. It's still really interesting to see the stories kind of unfold, even though they're, my history of it's kind of limited. I kind of think of that line from the producers, the original, where the director of Springtime for Hitler goes, I didn't know the Third Reich meant Germany. And it's like, I don't want, I'm not that historically ignorant, but gosh darn it, I, uh, well, let's just say I'm playing some uh, documentaries in the background while I do this turns just to remind myself what Case Blue and is about and what Operation Typhoon is about. Historically, essentially, the Germans got to, you know, fight in Moscow and Stalingrad, but then the Russians launched a huge counteroffensive, pocketing Germans and bloody battles. The other thing I want to talk about is the scope of the game. It's hard for me to visualize just how many people are involved in this, even with this giant sack of counters, which seems like a lot. It's hard to grasp that each of these tiny counters represents a thousand or more troops. And you just think about all of the pieces there. Um, at the end of like 1942, in the summer of 1942, apparently over half a million troops were AWOL, or missing or dead, for the Axis, and the Russians suffered some brutal losses too. So, maybe more. Sorry, Ed. Again, I'm so blind to the history, it's embarrassing. Which is partially why I'm playing this, just to get a feel for it. And it should be noted, my, my novice skills, both at this game and knowing the history, is going to make this very different from the historical turnout, which is why I'm not talking about the names and locations so much, because the things I'm doing are not what's going to historically happen unless I get really lucky, essentially. And... But it's impressive. Uh, this is such a cool thing in some sense. Like on one hand this is possibly the nerdiest thing can do, but on the other it's just kind of a sight to behold. I don't know how possible it is to get the scope of this unless you're in person. Like, I hope some of that carries through that this is just 11 plus feet of length and eight and a half wide stuff. It's going to be a pain once troops get into the middle of this table set and I have to lean over. I'm not sure how I'm going to move counters effectively over there. Maybe I'll, if I get to that point. Anyways, I just wanted to do some ranting before I start the uh, third turn of the game. And I will update you next time. Continuing the continuing the axis turn uh, three, top of the turn. Just finished up the Soviet reaction phase, and let's talk about a little bit of what happens. So in the northmost part of the map, nothing much. Uh, aircraft refits were kind of uh, stingy. You can see these guys in active units, basically. Al almost all of them were uh, inactive at the start of this turn. Uh, I do have this little supply depot dump right here that can refit some aircraft. I put some inactive aircraft there after doing a bombing run. So, the pocket's still there, and I harassed it a little bit. Um, I tried to, at least. I tried to get this... Um, the 7th Panzer to attack that um, 
that red uh, mechanized unit or that red motorized um, infantry at 6 to 12 didn't work out too well. Um, so we have an extender right here. This whole thing needs a little bit of fuel really. Um, I moved the 35th motorized uh, up here because I think I can get a good attack on them. Maybe get some exploit going and go forward and try to take Rezev. Sorry about my pronunciation in advance. So I'm going to mispronounce everything. Over here I have some interesting stuff. Um, I disorganized, or the six Panthers disorganized, Smolensk is going to be a bottomless stomach for feeding all of this low ammo right here as that feed me sign says. I restocked basically two supplies worth of ammo and all that did was like partially a stack. And I might do some low ammo attacks, feed into internal, internal stocks again to attack that stack. Or at least I was, but then the Soviets released some reserves to get there a little bit. Actually, they shouldn't be able to get there. I'm going to readjust that in a second. I might keep them. I'm going to release their reserve anyways um, to guard that HQ over there. I think they can get to it in time. No, no they can't. So I'm going to rewind that in a second. Either way, um, some offensive here, not too much progress on this front. Um, same over here, still low ammo, no real movement. Um, I do have some leg units trying to push forward and uh, these guys are, might go into low ammo to attack that guy. They might not, they're already low, they might have to exhaust their supply. We have a lot of that going on right now. So this guy's totally surrounded so they didn't bother attacking him. And this guy's out of supply so he's not going to even be able to attack. Not much going on right now. Still no fuel there. Move some trucks around to try to shuffle that but it still wasn't working out. I did consolidate some trucks here to get um, a potential extender going. I think we have five truck movement points under this stack. Or not. Mm, might just move that marker in a second. I know I have five tr truck points somewhere around here. Doing this without tweezers is a pain in the ass. Oh yeah, I, mar I swapped out some uh, supply stacks for some supply dumps over here. So, Smolensk has four wagon points sitting around, and so uh, that just cleans up the stacks and makes it so I don't have to um, put as many tokens on one single hex. Nothing over here. I think... And nothing over here that's a disorganized unit. I just lined them up so that I'm blocking that uh, front, those Russians a little bit better. Um, over here, I put a breakdown unit, I think, up here to um, re to fill up a step of that 24-3 uh, unit up at the front. This guy. In fact, I moved some breakdown units to their various divisions to re-step them. If a breakdown division goes into a um, goes into a hex with a division that has step losses, they automatically absorb it if they can. Um, and I also consolidated some uh, replacement uh, units, the personnel replacement units, into various reinforce various hexes with HQs. So hopefully, we'll be able to. Um, replenish some troops from the dead pile and restock some steps and all of that. Over here I might actually do an offensive. I actually have some supply points here and this disorganized um, Russian uh, infantry division so we can possibly get some combat going there which is nice. Advancing some railheads further. Um, the black cubes are railheads and I'm trying to get them 
as forward progress as possible. Um, over here and near Conotop, still have some supply points surprisingly enough. Just a few. I'm not going to do any combat though because they're kind of surrounded and I'd rather save it for uh, defending. Though that's not true for the 9th Panzer right here. They're going to try to take this HQ on this spot and get its supply points. And they might, and they have a fairly high odds for doing that. They tried doing overrun but lost a step or two to trying it. But hopefully that's not gonna, that's gonna turn out okay. Should have probably aircraft barraged that hex, but eh, well, hindsight's 2020. The 16th motorized should be moving up north, but they're at the moment kind of harassing this front and trying to maybe fight these guys. We'll see how that goes. And it's problematic because um, these leg units could cross the river and cause some hijinks. We'll see if that does anything. But this guy is feeding off the map to these people, so they're out of supply, so that's a little tricky. Um, we have reserves here that are going to move up to the front after combat during exploitation. I'm moving up a lot of divisions up here. This is actually where the meat of the movement uh, phase was spent. Um, the front looks very messy right now, but I've basically got these divisions surrounding the Russians right here. I disorganized this guy and have a um, division next to it that might cause some mayhem. Um, Poltova even has a few supply points to cause said mayhem. We'll see if that goes anywhere. Um, I don't think I'm going to do too many offensives. I might spend some supply points to attack that disorganized tax. If I do that, that would be pretty great. Getting some supply po extra supply points for the Axis is always good. I did a train busting mission here so that if the um, Russians tried to s send supplies this way, they'll have to spend double rail cap to do so. Train busting essentially makes it more costly to do rail shipping and um, moving into those hexes. Um, had some interceptors, but uh, didn't go too well for the Russians, so the mission still went through. Over here, I have this entire hex surrounded, and it's an HQ. I'm hoping that it'll be out of supply next turn instead of uh, attacking it, because uh, I don't have any supply points here, just some truck points sitting around. Um, nothing over here. The I did realize that the German HQs can't supply Hungarian or Romanian or Italian divisions. They, you have to rely on um, um, the HQ itself from you have to rely on the HQ from the back lines. I might have to recheck supply to see if the, those guys are okay. Uh, we'll see. Um, but these guys I did check and are fine, and the Romanians down here are fine. No combat's going to happen here, I just don't have the supplies for it, and I'm afraid of internal stocks now. I mean, I might do some fighting, but it just doesn't seem like it pan out that well. In fact, I don't Putting those guys in the front is kind of dangerous, but I don't know. We'll see. Might even think about some fighting there, so let's put a red marker there. Um, over down in Crimea, which I believe is what this island is, and then the Taiman Peninsula is over there. Um, nothing. I tried to overrun with this guy, but ended up retreating and losing one step. That guy's only one step big now. So no advancements here other than, oh, this guy. I'm going to rewind and move that guy. He should not be in strat mode anymore. I should be moving him forward. Outside of that, though, um, nothing much else to report. We're going to be do. I already, we're going to be doing um, combat phase in a moment and hopefully finish this turn uh, soon enough and then move on to the Russians which is going to probably be me shuffling supplies down rail lines like a madman and that's gonna take most of the turn I'd wager so yeah uh, games going pretty well so far uh, I think the Russians are winning right now um, they're deflecting the axis advances pretty strongly 
hopefully that's going to change and I'll take some spots but as it stands um, the axis has a lot of work to do we'll see how it goes I have just completed the third turn first player exploitation phase the axis have essentially finished their turn so and the Russians will go next and they're in a precarious position so I did some combats none up here but down here though I fought um, basically this weak link right here uh, there was a artillery unit right where that 414 motorized infantry is now and that led to some exploitation where I just uh, instead of attacking put the these two tanks behind enemy supply lines, meaning they are out of trace supply. So I've just double, I just pocketed, I've just taken out like a little bit of a pocket that was supplying that pocket. I've made a pocket that was helping a pocket. So that's pretty good. Down here, I released a reserve few and was sending sent over here that 1045 infantry and basically I'm just sending units up keeping reserves down so and small and skilled still needs tons of supply when it can get it over here was going to have a fight but thought against it because then my units would have no supply to defend with or at least a reserve to send another 10-4-5 uh, up there and the LAHSS division is moving up or sorry not the LAH, the SSR SS infantry is moving up to that front so we're going to try to push for Bryansk soon enough and then as well the road to Viasma over there is kind of blocked which apparent which I think historically was taken and the road to Moscow is just continuing straight shot so these hedgehogs man just hard to blitzkrieg through them so a lot of the game right now is uh, fucking with the Russian supplies. And down here, uh, there was an exploit, or there was a good battle, the eight four threes of the 29th Motorized Division took, oh, took out a Russian infantry division and advanced a little bit further. They essentially moved two spaces. So that was nice. Exploit units move half their movement speed again in the exploit phase, while reserve units move their full amount. Speaking of which, release the reserve here to move forward. Trying to get the large infantry divisions of the Axis forward, marching. Down here I had some interesting action. I took some... I ate some internal stocks and put my units at low ammo to attack that town. They took out the headquarters unit there, making all of this pretty much out of supply. That was the railhead they were using to do trace supply with. So this whole group is going to have some out of supply issues soon enough. And then, so the Ninth Panzer's doing their job. I think they took a little bit of supply as well, which they're going to hopefully replenish some stock with later. Down here is a mess. It used to be a nice pretty V. Now I took a lot of the south defense, which may be a bad idea, to pierce through the north. They have pocketed these two divisions right here, the 12-2-2 and the 10-2-2. I put train busting right there so that double supply points have to get in. I mentioned that last time. Did some exploit here. Didn't go well on the exploit combats, but I did uh, 
I th think I did put out things out of supply, especially since this group is keeping it out. So I have basically this group out of supply and these Russians out of supply. And, both, and all my units are relatively safe as is. So the Russians are in a precarious position over in Kharkov and uh, that city that has way too long a name. Yeah, I can't advance the railhead past that river there. I gotta remember that rule. This thick blue line is, a, is essentially the extent of the railhead I can uh, push out. I'll remember that. But over here, I'm trying to get a railhead to Poltava. We'll see how that goes. Over here, I tried to do some combat. It didn't really go well. I actually that six three that lone six three three there, the number one, had to retreat from its spot. And then over here, didn't do any combat, but I did leave. But it will be tricky for the um, that group to be supplied. I believe that 743 right there is blocking trace supply. Actually, no, that's not true. Um, and I did try attacking um, this little bit right here, but it ended up um, making me half. I think I ended up losing a unit or two from that. So that wasn't so in um, that city. I thought it was a village I was attacking, but it was a minor city, which is really a much harder to take. So it is what it is. And again, nothing down here. Kept the reserves and not doing much. So it took a while to do this turn, uh, much longer than the second turn, because this actually had a lot of battles going on. It's going to be really hard to keep supply lines and uh, kind of tidy and in my head and keep track of where all the supply lines are going. I might write down some, like, do some arts and craft and write down some, like, arrows indicating where I'm trying to push supplies to. That's why I have Feed Me in, in, uh, in Smolensk, just reminding me that I need to put supply points there. The Russians also have a complicated rail network, so We'll see how well I can do as the Russians to save their supplies. I thought the Russians were winning um, before the exploit phase, but now, like, the supply line issues, they're kind of in dire straits. I think, historically, I'm still doing worse as the Axis than, uh, than history says, but at the same time, uh, I'm doing some fairly strong pushes in other places. So we'll see how this goes. The Russian third turn is finished and that's the game turn down. So what happened? There was a lot of German threatening supply. The Russians managed to recover mostly all of it. There was some damage uh, some in a little bit, which I'll show, but overall, pretty good turn for the Russians. So what we have is in the north side of the map, you may notice those DG units, that is all Axis, all the Germans being taken down. The Russians used their massive numbers to kind of take them out, and then some artillery bombing to uh, disorganize a few troops to help the advantage. It seems like the Russians really benefit from disorganizing the enemy with uh, artillery barrage before using their massive numbers. Or really just, they can't really do overruns because of their low combat values, but they can't, or low action ratings, but they can do some pretty great combats with just really large division numbers. Really large combat values just because they have so many pieces attacking. So many divisions. So over here we had combat. Went okay. Did make the Axis retreat a little. It's still a pretty static front, which is about what the Russians want. They just want to protect this front. Same here with this little group. 
there was a little bit of combat. I tried to take out the breakout uh, one of these guys, but ended up losing a step instead. Had um, had this 11-1-1 unit uh, released from reserve to enter there. The Axis also did a reaction. They tried to move this cavalry regiment forward some. Over on this end, because of the pocket, I decided to start retreating my units, uh, which is probably going to get him killed by Stalin, but whatever. There's no real rules against it. But basically, I flipped all these guys to move mode, and I'm trying to get them out of that pocket. And some of these people are already out. However, because Rezev was uh, captured, what I did was I moved some divisions next to that railroad, which keeps these guys in trace supply. It does prevent, it should have prevented the trace, it should have prevented rail supply. Uh, but then I realized that the 36 motorized is all in movement mode, so they actually did not prevent zone of control, they actually did not prevent trace supply or rail cap to be used getting to reserve, so I basically wasted a lot of uh, resources trying to protect it. But I think it's still a good idea for next turn just to negate some zone of control. So probably, so it probably was the right decision overall to do that. Tried some combats, didn't go too well on this front. Lost some units, but overall I didn't um, make too much of a fuss. These guys got disorganized here too, I think. And I think that was the axis right there. Yeah, they're low ammo and all of that. Over on this front, a lot of battles on to Vashna. And I moved some troops in. I did a couple of battles. I did one where this 625 is standing. I drove away the 6 Panzer. And or well as 1225 is as well. And I got some um, I sacrificed a guard unit to make the DG unit their retreat and then sacrifice and then uh, rushed in some units to make the six Panzer stack their retreat. So we're in a better spot now with all of that jazz. And I have a reserve set up for just in case, though it has a low move value, so I might not get much done with that. Overran, or not overran, just got some tanks to go here. The Russians have so many supply points that I was actually able to use tons of them to get all my attacks done. So they ran into the 743 5th Panzer Infantry right here and made them run from there to there. And over here... Um, I tried to attack the SSR, and I did get them to retreat, but I also had to retreat myself and take a loss, so it really wasn't a great fight there. I had to essentially pull back, but so did they, which they were fine with because they can move straight forward and actually advance their front to Bryansk, which is that area right there. Bryansk is, though, really... Um, it seems like the Russians took Bryansk by now, so, um, or maybe next turn. So really the Russians, have, the Axis have a lot of work cut out for them and are technically behind on that front. I think overall the Axis are more behind than they historically were, so I'm not playing them that well. And I had good roles with them, I just decided to eat into their internal stocks, which was ultimately a bad idea. Over here, I just set up a guy in reserve and put up some supply points there. But overall, I'm just waiting for the Axis to get their moving on over here. Retreated some infantry or leg units back here, and the reason I did that was to keep them in supply since they're... These guys essentially have taken over this area. These guys are retreated as well. They were out of supply, so I fed them. 
off the map with some stocks. Next turn, they should be able to be in supply a little bit um, once they retreat back to Kharkov. Kharkov had a lot of excitement. I threw in a lot of troops through rail cap. I put a headquarters unit there so that I could, um, I could uh, possibly get replacements there in a couple of turns. So like I can send replacement units and then cause replacements to appear in Kharkov, which is pretty useful. I DG that unit under there that was a 24-3 division and did it, I sent a barrage there. Um, the units are mostly recovered. I thought I was going to be out of supply with a bunch of AQs, but I spun them around. Like, they were essentially where that 16.10 hex was, but they kind of spun around and managed to all get in trace supply. It's pretty much a miracle. The Dunbus unit here actually um, took out a um, Jaeger division right there, and the Jaeger division had to die. The Dumbus had to retreat, but didn't lose. I think they lost one unit but and got disorganized, but the disorganized goes away. Over here, the 12-2-2 stack managed to make that 12-4-3 Italian division retreat, and they're actually in a tricky spot because they're out of supply, and I did a train-busting marker to make it even harder for them to move. They should be able to get supply in back pretty quickly, but everybody here is in supply again, which is also kind of a miracle. The, 10 H, the 10th Army HQ, which is not historically the 10th Army HQ, the 10-0 HQ over there had to eat its supplies off the map. This 12-2 didn't get into that hex until combat, so the supply phase I had to eat a little bit of my uh, on-map supply. Didn't do anything over here. I think I tried a barrage or something and it didn't work out. And down here, I, I this guy's really fine with all the combat with the situation over here. The Axis hasn't really advanced their front too well, so we're not really worried about that spot. And down here in War Games Baka, War Games Senpai Baka Dice territory, which I am still regretting ever doing. No, no conflict. The the Russians are on total defense there, and they have good defense. I might have wanted to level up the Hedgehogs here from level one to level two, but I'm relatively okay with where they are now. I did ship in a lot of units to Sevastopol, and then ship units that were in Sevastopol to um, various ports. Um, on to Crimea, Crimea um, or upwards, or railed some people from Crimea to the front a little bit. Shipped some guys that were on the south end, south end map box, which is this lovely thing right here, to all the way over here through some port landings. And that lets them that lets me get more troops in Crimea, which I hope I'm accurately stating that this is Crimea, otherwise I'll feel really bad. So, overall, a pretty successful Russian turn. Um, the Axis still have a lot of work cut out for them, and I'm going to have to really think about how I'm going to finagle their turn. We finished the third turn of the game, and I'll move on to the fourth soon, and see where we go from there.